When a man's tired of London, he's tired of life. Samuel Johnson was totally right. And what he didn't say is in this great city, you should always do something you love. Our university is literally in the heart of London. This is my Shoreditch. This is my Islington. This is our London. And those jokers that say they're from these ends. But we know where it's at. We've got tall buildings with sweet views and nice walks. We're talking totally immersive, interactive and collaborative technology. Just another reason to do something you love. So they say size isn't everything. But having one of the biggest teaching super labs in Europe is definitely worth noting. Sweet. Now it's easy to be teacher's pet when you're doing something you love. I mean, what other university has artists in residence for their students? So if you're going to do something, do something you love at London Met. So if you're going to do something, do something you love at London Met. Just making sure that all of you are here. We hope you're here as well and welcome again. Good morning. We are Essex. We are Essex. We're on the side of people with guts. Rebels with a cause. We're about people who love to learn how but want to challenge why. But why do we have to stop here? Why can't we take it further to the bit where it really gets interesting? We're about the people who huddle outside a class long after it's finished because there's much more to be said, more arguments to be had. We're about people who are bold enough to challenge inequality and the status quo. People who don't expect the world to change simply because they liked a Facebook status or nodded when someone else spoke. At Essex, you're not just a student, you're a member, someone with genuine license to shape what goes on around you. To us, it doesn't matter where you've come from. We're interested in how you want to grow and what you want to change. We're after people who will help us to push the frontiers of knowledge. Challenging convention is in our DNA, all of which leaves you with a decision. Are you gonna sit and watch the world go by? Or do you have the courage and energy to shape it? We'll help you explore, question and create powerful ideas. We'll introduce you to people from every corner of the planet, a genuinely global community that lives, works and plays together. If you give up at the first hurdle, Essex isn't for you. If you want to be spoon-fed a degree, Essex isn't for you. If you're brave enough to have ideas and generous enough to share them, welcome home. Everyone, thank you for joining us today. We see that um, our room is almost full, so we are ready to start. My name is Lina, and I will be your moderator today. The webinar will be conducted by Kili Alvarez from University of Essex and Ioana Babic from London Metropolitan University. We will start with general presentation of studying and applying to the UK and afterwards we'll present each of the universities. We will finish with answering your questions that you can make at any time in the chat. You can see it on the right side of your screen. We see some of you are already sending us good morning and hello, so that's wonderful. Here all the questions can be asked and we'll make sure they're answered at the end. During the presentation, we will be sharing with you brochures of each universities. We also have a personal statement guide that would be very useful. You can download all those documents on your computer and go back to them later. We will have approximately one hour with you today, so hoping that you're all awake and fresh. It is my pleasure to pass the word first to Kili Alvarez from Essex. Thank you again for coming and enjoy. Oh, hi guys, um, good morning. Um, thank you for
we really, really appreciate having you um, here with us this morning. Um, so as Lena mentioned, we're going to talk to you a little bit generally about uh, why study in the UK and what the benefits are of studying in the UK. Um, so firstly, there are over uh, 37,000 undergraduate courses um, in the UK and over 300 different providers. So that might be quite overwhelming um, for you to hear, but we're going to give you some hints and tips about how uh, how you can um, make a decision and about the university and course that you will apply for. Um, so why study in the UK? So a UK degree um, will make sure that you're um, you're well placed to secure employment and whether that's in your own country or whether that's abroad um, it's a really really good um, starting point for your career if you've got a degree from the UK um, and the UK education has always been really well respected um, all over the world so you can be assured that um, that will look great on your CV and I think one of the things that I, I particularly enjoyed myself about studying in the UK is how international the environment is um, so the great thing is, is that, you know, people come from all over the world to study um, in, in the UK. Um, and that means you can get to sit in a class, you know, next to someone from uh, one person from Greece, one person from the US, uh, someone from India. So I think all of these kind of um, different cultures together in one room just really contribute to, um, to your experience and, and, and the environment that you're in. Um, so how do we how do we apply? Um, so normally uh, we would the first point your first point of call will be UCAS. Um, so UCAS uh, stands for Universities and Colleges Admissions Service, um, and it makes it really easy for you go, you guys because that means you, you can um, manage your whole application from one website um, and apply to up to five different courses. And that can be five courses within the same university, um, within five different universities. You can mix it up as you as you please. Um, there is an application cost, so it's quite small, so uh, £13 for one choice or £24 uh, for two to five choices. Um, and you're given equal consideration as long as you apply by the deadline, um, which is the uh, Jan 15th of January for most courses. If you're looking to apply for Oxford, Cambridge, veterinary or medicine degrees, um, they're going to be, the deadline is the 15th of October. So that's just something to, to bear in mind that if you're looking to apply to any of those courses, you need to be um, a lot earlier than, than the other uh, courses that are, are um, the deadline is January. Um, I'm going to pass over to Joanna now. So I'm going to continue uh, what Kelly started about the application. So what you generally need for an application is a personal statement. You will need one or two references and don't worry about them. Uh, in the UCAS, you just fill in details of your referee and this is sorted for you. Uh, you will need your IB results or A-levels or if you don't do IB or A-levels, anything uh, that is equivalent to that. For some uh, courses, you are required to do an interview, uh, submit a portfolio or sometimes an audition. But these generally apply to, uh, for example, art courses. So if you're applying for theater arts, this is perfectly understandable that you should have an audition. If you apply for uh, architecture uh, or art and design, uh, you will need to submit a portfolio because academics need to assess uh, your skill and need to decide which course is best for you. And, um, and when it comes to fund fees and funding, uh, undergraduate tuition fees for September 2020 are 9,250 uh, for most courses uh, in, in, uh, within uh, London Met. Uh, they could go up to 14,000, but that's uh, depending on the course, depending on uh, your whether you're EU or international, and uh, it generally also depends on the length on the course. But these are the prices per uh, year, uh, and we uh, offer a range of scholarships for uh, for offer holders. I'm sure Kili also has. Uh, quite a few scholarships we could be talking about. Uh, generally, you can get a discount on your uh, on the scholarship in a form of a discount of uh, your tuition fee, and uh, 
And to apply for a scholarship, you need to have an offer from us, and then only uh, you need to uh, apply for the scholarship. So you don't need to pay anything to apply for a scholarship. You only need to have an offer. And uh, they, these are often based on academic excellence. automatic uh, scholarship applied to your application um, but as Joanna mentioned you would need to have an offer first sorry I'm not able to change to the next slide Okay, thank you. Um, so, as Lena mentioned, uh, my name is Keely Alvarez. I am the representative of the University of Essex. Um, I'm also an, a graduate from Essex as well. So, I graduated in 2014 in Modern Languages and Linguistics. Um, and as mentioned in the uh, in the introduction video, um, Essex is somewhere which was a university that was founded um, in the uh, in the 60s, um, and it was kind of created um, in order to um, be a bit of a rebellious university, um, let's say, um, and the idea was um, to create a university where you know the, the contact between the professors and the the students was a bit less formalised um, than what it had been until that point in most universities, in most traditional universities, and that kind of um, that kind of atmosphere and that culture still continues in the university today. Um, so why Essex? So we have always been well ranked for student satisfaction, so top 15 in England um, for student satisfaction. Um, and we also got gold in the teaching excellence framework. So this is a framework set out by the government, um, which kind of ranks the quality of uh, teaching. Um, and we were ranked gold, which is the highest ranking. Um, we're actually fourth in the UK for international outlook as well, um, as we are one of the most uh, international universities. Um, so about 40% of our students are from outside of the UK. Um, and we won University of the Year in 2018, which is something we're really, really proud of. Um, so where are we based? So Essex is a county uh, based in the southeast of England, as you can see here on the map. Um, we actually have three campuses although our main campus is based in Colchester, which is um, the oldest recorded town in, uh, in Britain. Uh, so it's got a lot of history there. Um, and then Southend is our uh, second campus, which is about 40 miles, 40 minutes from central London. Um, and then we have one in Loughton as well. And our Loughton campus um, is purely for acting, um, acting courses, uh, theatre direction and stage management. So it's quite a highly focused um, campus there. Um, Essex is, uh, has some of the safest uh, cities in the UK, according to official survey, surveys. And something which um, I think might be of interest to you guys is that it has the lowest rainfall and the highest number of hours of sunshine, which is very important, I know. <laughs> so this is our Colchester campus. So as you can see, it's uh, very green. It used to be Parkland before so um, the, if you like nature it's a really really nice place to go especially in the summer you, we have a lot of barbecues around the on, around the lake um, and we get a lot of people just coming just to spend the day basically on, on campus because it is um, such a nice sort of green environment to be in um, we have 16,000 students um, mainly most of those are based in in the Colchester campus um, and as you can see you know we have um, accommodation we have a gym um, we have a sports arena and uh, lots of other facil facilities that I'll talk to you about in more detail now. Um, so here's a list of our departments. Um, within each department, you have a number of different courses as well. So these aren't the only courses that we offer. Um, so we have over 200 different undergraduate programmes. So just to give you an idea of the courses that we offer. So our particular strengths are in the social sciences. Um, and so particularly uh, economics, um, politics, uh, international relations um, and uh, languages and linguistics as well, uh, as well as business. 
Um, so as mentioned, we are a very uh, international university. So we have over 140 nationalities represented on our campus. Um, and that goes for the staff as well. So this, our staff come from, um, from all over the world. Um, which is which is great. Um, so about 14% are from the EU and 22% are uh, from outside of the EU. And we really try to encourage our students as well to um, to uh, be as international and global as possible. So we try to encourage them to have maybe a, a sort of some sort of experience outside of um, outside of uh, the UK. Try and push them to do a year abroad. Take up a language as well. We offer language classes for free. Um, so we really try to encourage this kind of um, international outlook on our students as well. Um, so uh, our students union, as mentioned, we are really well ranked for um, for our student satisfaction. And I think a lot of that is down to our students union. Um, so they do really, really great job in making sure that our students have everything they need and that they have a great time. So we currently have 15,000 members of our students union, um, over 140 different societies um, and 60 different sports clubs that you can get involved in. Um, we have uh, shops on campus, we have bars, we have a cinema, we have a nightclub, underground nightclub. Um, and aside from all the fun stuff as well, the Students' Union is a really, really good port of call for um, things like uh, if you need confidential advice, they can provide uh, free advice, also free legal advice. Um, so they are really, really a good port of call if, if you know if you get into any sort of uh, situations on campus and you're not sure who to talk to. Um, they also organise a lot of events. Events. So from your first week to freshers' week, um, they host a whole uh, number of different um, events. So um, particularly the Freshers Fair, which is a great opportunity for you to go and sign up to all the different sports uh, societies. Um, Societies are clubs that you can join um, just if you're sort of interested in learning more about something or if you just want to try something random. So we have things like Harry Potter Society, um, Tea Appreciation Society, uh, which are just random ones. But others are sort of more academic, some are more cultural as well, Latin American Society. Um, so it's a really good opportunity for you to try out some new stuff. Um, if you're into sports as well, um, we're really, really well equipped for sports. So as I mentioned, we've got a brand new sports arena, um, uh, climbing wall court studios, outdoor pitches. Um, and if you are if you play particularly well um, in um, uh, sports such as volleyball, basketball or rugby, um, you may be able to be considered for a sports scholarship as well. In terms of additional support, so um, we have e extra support for English language. Um, also Nightline, which is a, a number you can call at night if you're living on campus and you have any issues um, and you need to talk to someone. A multi-faith ch chaplaincy, we have um, an NHS medical centre based on campus as well. And the university organises a lot of exam de-stress activities. So they put on um, a, a temporary a petting zoo on campus. We have water slides. So they really, it's quite a big focus on mental health and making sure that you're not feeling too stressed at those times. In terms of the arts, um, so we have a theatre on all, each of our campuses um, and we have a cinema in the Colchester campus as well. We have the lar largest collection of um, art from Latin America at, camp at uh, Colchester campus. Um, so if you're interested in art history or curating, uh, we actually have, you're able to curate the collection as part of your, your degree. And we also have our own newspaper and radio. Um, any student, even if you're not studying journalism or something related to film or radio, um, can be part of Rebel, which is our um, student-led media uh, company on campus. And you can learn um, how to be a radio presenter, how to host your own radio show, how to write for the magazine. Um, so that we really push students as well to, to be creative and, and get involved in stuff you know, that's not necessarily related to their degree. Um, in terms of employability, um, we have a careers and student development centre, so they're there to make sure that you have all the support that you need, um, both while you're studying and when you graduate, um, and make sure that you are able to find a job uh, in a field that you're interested in. We provide um, part-time jobs on campus as well, so some of those are, um, you know, fairly simple, you know, working in a bar, in a cafe, um, if you're just looking to earn a bit of extra money. But if you want to gain experience in a particular area, 
So for example, in my last year, I really wanted to gain experience in, um, in business development. So I did a paid internship in my last year um, working for the university um, because they have a lot of different business units on the campus. So they have a hotel, uh, they have restaurants, and I was uh, working in business development, helping, um, helping the team that kind of runs all of that. So that really was the first leap for me to get a job when I graduate, not this job, uh, another job when I graduated. Um, so we really, really try to encourage students to, to make up, take up these sort of opportunities. Uh, it makes you so much more employable when you finish. And um, one thing to note as well, which is quite interesting, um, you will um, have the opportunity sometimes to do what's called a placement year. So between your second and third year, uh, you have the opportunity to do a, um, a, a work placement. So this is often referred to as a sandwich year. So most of our courses offer that opportunity um, if you want to um, if you want to get a bit of experience before you uh, before you graduate. Um, there's obvious, ob sometimes there's this thing where you graduate where it's they kind of expect you to have experience, uh, but sometimes you know that's not um, that's not possible for everyone. So these kind of sandwiches are really really good opportunity for you to get um, hands on work experience. Um, and that concludes my presentation for today. Um, so I would just say if you do have any questions, you've got my contact there. So um, whether that's an email or Instagram, I don't mind how you get in touch. Um, I would just encourage you as well to. Um, I would encourage you as well to use our chat with a student function on our website. Um, which is a link you can use if you want to chat with a current student or even a staff member of the university. And we're also hosting a lot of um, free webinars. So if you're still not sure about what course you'd like to study, um, you can use that link um, in order to uh, watch free webinars and taste the lectures, uh, which might help you with your decision of, of what course you'd like to study. Um, so if you go to the Talks and Tasters page on the University of Essex website, I can share it now in the chat in case you'd like to, um, in case you'd like to know more. So uh, thank you very much. I think I'm going to pass over now to Joanna. I think, I think we uh, should tackle together. So um, I'm sure everybody's uh, in, interested about uh, COVID and uh, what's going to happen in September. So just a few uh, a, a bit of information uh, before I get to my presentation. So uh, right now, all the universities in the UK are considering different different options. So um, we'll see whether uh, we will start with. I they think it's right now it's up to each university to decide what they want to do. But there are different options. So uh, what we could offer is, let's say, first semester as distance learning, and then as soon as we can uh, go back to face-to-face. -face. Uh, what is also being discussed is an option of doing uh, of doing social distancing in class, uh, but there's no, uh, no closer description yet of how this would look like. Uh, we are also talking about just uh, slightly um, postponing the start, uh, so instead, let's say, end of September as it normally starts, let's say, in, in uh, October. Uh, I, we also have at London Met uh, a February start, so um, you could probably start a bit later, so you could catch up over summer and then come back to, to uh, year two in September. So there are different options and right now it's hard to tell because there are still four months, uh, almost five months before the uh, year, the academic year starts. So as soon as we know, you will be informed too. And uh, in terms of English, uh, all universities will soon have uh, information on what other English qualifications they will be approving. I think Kili will be able to tell you what uh, what they uh, currently accept at London Met right now. You just need to submit your application and our admissions team will assess it and will guide you uh, what to do further because we also have our internal English test. Kili, would you like to, uh, do, do you know what other uh, English tests you're Yeah, you're I mean, um, for moment? IB students, normally be able to consider your IB English anyway um, but if you don't have that um, we can consider the online TOEFL um, it's called the TOEFL at home test 
So we can consider that. And we're also consider, considering the IELTS indicator test, which is basically the online uh, version of IELTS. So we're, we're accepting those two at the moment. And we're still considering other, other um, English tests as well now. So. Perfect. Well, also something that uh, you're probably wondering about, just in case um, the first semester is online, uh, universities are not going to discount it because the transition to online delivery is actually even, uh, some say it's even more costly uh, if you don't do that normally. So there wouldn't be any discount, but if you do the first semester online, you are saving a lot of money on accommodation. So that's something to uh, to consider too. And uh, and um, is there anything that I haven't said yet? Um, I think that was. Uh, I think that was everything. No, yeah, I think that's everything related to to COVID. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I I think all of us uh, in the UK are hoping to start as usual in September. So uh, we would really like to get back to our our offices, believe me. And uh, we really hope to see you uh, in September so that you can start your classes normally. But even if they start online, don't worry about that. Uh, the previous year, the current students, they have already um, <clears throat> they have already transition to the online delivery so you wouldn't be uh, the first who have to experience it so uh without further ado i would like to welcome you to the presentation uh, i have for you about london met so um just a few details about our school uh we uh, we aim to give an opportunity to study to everyone who would like to do that. And we have plenty of different courses. We also have over 200 different courses. Uh, so most of uh, most of courses you're, or subject you're looking into, we probably have that. We only don't have uh, uh, medicine in terms of uh, doctor uh, degrees. Uh, and um, engineering, the, the closest we have to engineering is IT engineering, but everything else, uh, go ahead and browse our website. We probably have that. Uh, so we have two campuses based in the heart of London and our employability skills uh, are very important. We have a, a work-based module uh, embedded in every undergraduate degree. It's optional for postgraduate de postgraduate degrees. So if you uh, if you think uh, that getting more experience, work experience while you're still studying, uh, would be beneficial for you, then you're absolutely right. Um, it's really hard uh, normally when you when you um, graduate and you don't have any work experience. That's why we provide our students with an opportunity to work. So we have. A career service uh, team who will help you with uh, putting together your CV, uh, mock interviews, uh, and general uh, job search advice. And we also have very modern facilities, so you will be able to see a few of, a few pictures of these facilities uh, in the next few slides. And uh, so, as I mentioned, we have quite a few courses. Uh, we are combined of a few uh, academic schools, so uh, School of Law, uh, of Computing and Digital Media, Human Sciences, Social Professions, Social Sciences, uh, and CAS School of Art. And just to let you know, the CAS School of Art is currently ranked uh, seventh by the Guardian uh, because it's um, because of of its focus on uh, student. Uh, experience and teaching. So here you can see a few pictures of our campus in Holloway Road. Uh, so the, all all courses that are uh, art and design related, they would be taught in Allgate. Uh, the all other courses are taught in Holloway Road. If you're thinking about uh, film uh, production or studies courses, these are taught uh, be between these two campuses. So you would be traveling between them, but they are very close to each other. They are like 30 minutes away. And here you can see a few pictures of the classrooms we have in Holloway Road. So there is a bit of, 
of color, uh, just to make sure that you don't feel like uh, studying in a hospital, uh, which I experienced when I did my bachelor degree. Uh, but that wasn't in the UK, I can assure you. Uh, here is our learning center. So learning center is a place where you have the library, you have rooms that you could you could rent for uh, your group studies, uh, where you could uh, rent a booth where you can write your dissertation without being interrupted, uh, and uh, everything you need there. Any space um, you could require for studying, it is there. Here you, here you can see a few pictures of rooms we have available in Allgate campus. So the, these courses in Allgate are often very practice based. So if you're doing design, if you're doing uh, fashion, um, you will need a lot of practice to know um, to, to know what you're doing, what you're talking about, uh, not only theory. So, for example, the first year uh, BA textiles graduates, they design their own, uh, it's called Project Red, and they design their own creation, their own outfit, but the, the condition is it has to be made of red fabric. It's up to you what you want to do with it. It's up to you how it's going to look like. If you want to see uh, on YouTube, we have some catwalks filmed with the Project Red uh, creations, and it's actually very interesting. And these catwalks happen on campus. Uh, here you can see a few pictures of our newsrooms, uh, TV studio, and TriCaster. We also have a mock courtroom for law uh, students. Uh, we also have a Bloomberg room. Uh, I don't know if you noticed uh, here. Uh, you can see we have some um, spe specifically uh, adjusted rooms for uh, business students. Uh, here is our largest uh, in Europe uh, science center where you could have up to 300 students um, studying at the same time. Uh, we also have two canteens on campus. We have a courtyard. Uh, we also have a, a nightclub um, or a bar, um, depending on what time of the day it is. It's also on campus. So if you are feeling, um, if you're feeling comfortable on campus, then go ahead. You can um, go to the bar. Uh, there are, if if you are of age, you can get a beer. If you just want to drink a tea, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but everything you could possibly want to do is on campus or very close to the campus because in central London there's there are so many different restaurants um, that you would be really surprised. Uh, here you can see our uh, gym. So we also have gym on campus and it's free to all our students as soon as they are enrolled. And this is because we, on, we don't want only uh we don't want you only to be uh smart and and well educated we also want you to be healthy uh, as kili mentioned uh, your mental health is very important to all uh universities in the uk and uh, we also have specific uh counselors who could who could um assist you while you're studying uh, so we also have student unions, uh, funding and financial advice, disabilities and dyslexia pro advice, uh, counseling service, and uh, we also have advice on how to register with the doctor, how to open a bank account, and any other things uh, that could uh, pose an issue when you first arrive. Uh, and also we have a student hub, so it's like a one-man uh, shop where you go in and any of these problems, you say, I have a problem with, let's say, accommodation. And they find you a person who will do that, who will help you with that. So you don't have to run around the campus to find uh, an answer to your problem. You just go into this one place and whatever your problem is, you tell them. And these are our student ambassadors and employees, and they will assist you with whatever th this might be. So it's very handy. And uh, here we have a testimonial from David. Uh, so we have quite a few, um, quite a few uh, students who are happy with studying with us. And you can uh, hear their testimonials also on YouTube, where um, we have 
uh, so graduates or current students uh, speaking about their experience. So whether that's business, uh, music production, illustration, uh, law, you will f you, you will be able to find someone speaking of their experience and um, at London Met. So thank you very much. That was my presentation, and I think we can get uh, the next. If step you still have a question, please post it, and we are starting to answer now. Keely will take the first question. Do you expect any disturbance in the deadlines if students will not be able to take entrance? Sorry, could you say that again, Lena? Sorry, I can't hear you. Once again. <laughs> no problem. Do you expect any disruption in the deadlines if students may not be able to take um, entrance? Yeah, good, good question. Um, so we are taking each situation uh, case by case because obviously all qualifications are due at different times of the year. Um, so I think in your case, it's best to check specifically for your situation um, uh, with the university based on your qualifications. Um, but just to let you know, we are really um, preparing and looking at ways we can consider qualifications, even if you haven't uh, got your final certificate. So we're looking at ways to, to get around that and see how we can maybe consider your, your uh, grades until now. Um, and, and or maybe look at some sort of average. So we're looking at lots of different ways to um, to deal with that. So so don't worry. I, I don't know if Joanna wants to add anything. Um, the only side, the only thing I can say that uh, you should not worry about this too much because uh, in the UK these A levels were also cancelled. So we are uh, generally taking uh, average grades preceding uh, the test. So. Transcripts so, so far, uh, with any grades you had so far, you can just submit that and our admissions will uh, advise you whether we can give you a conditional offer or not. It is understandable, so it's most of the countries right now, uh, I think that's whole of Europe that has this problem, so you're not on your own. So it's us trying to, think, to, to um, work with it uh, and we are just waiting and seeing and you, you this shouldn't stop you from submitting your application you just need to wait for um for further advice from uh, admissions uh, and uh, i was asked to read the second question so uh kiwi what uh what do we mean um, by so offer, offer is um is is what the university will send you so after you've made an application um the university will send you hopefully what's called a conditional offer um, and that offer normally mentions on there the conditions that you are still due to, to meet in order to receive um, an unconditional offer. Um, so that just basically means that the university are offering you um, a place. And I have nothing to add to that. Uh, so it just, you, you submit your application, then admissions reviews it. Um, I don't know really how about Essex, but we have uh, about two weeks turnaround. So within about 10 working days, you should hear back from admissions. And then they tell you whether you have a conditional offer, uh, an unconditional offer, if you met all the, uh, all the requirements. But this is quite impossible right now because we don't have your final uh, certificates or, or your IVs or, and so on. Uh, and then you can accept that offer. Uh, to, so you, you're declaring that you do want to study uh, with us uh, or you don't have to accept this offer. So, uh, um, yeah, that's just it. Uh, oh, yeah. The next question, Kiwi. Yeah, no, I was going to read yeah. the next you question ask... for you. Yeah. So, selectivity oh, yeah. results Go ahead. Um, are, like, are like the IB results. I mean, could I enter with my selectivity note or grade? Well, I'm not sure what do you mean by selectivity note, uh, but 
we what we take under consideration at the moment when we don't have the final uh, final exam results are uh, your transcripts to date. So your grades to date uh, and your estimated uh, final uh, grade um, in the end of the year. I, I would just add as well, um, the, I know in Spain you have to do the selectividad to apply to university in, the, in Spain. But in the UK, we, we don't actually look at the selectividad. We would look at your uh, bachillerato grades. So this this is more this is important for us, not so much the selectivity that the 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 Spanish entrance uh, exams. So I think we can move on to the next question. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Should I read that? Uh, so Ellie is asking, what are the English proficiency requirements for international students? And do you have an extra admissions test for any maths, finance related? Yeah, sure. Um, do you want to go so first, please? The English proficiency requirements, they can really depend on the university and the course that you're applying to. Um, so that's something you have to check on a case-by-case -case basis. But just to give you an idea, um, most universities would um, look for IELTS um, and the minimum requirement would be 6.0, which is kind of like a high B2 level. Uh, high B to almost C1 level. Um, some universities, in the case of Essex, we would consider also the Cambridge Advanced or Proficiency exam. Uh, we would accept uh, TOEFL as well, and your IB, uh, your IB English A or B grades as well. So we can consider those. Um, so Joanna, I don't know if you want to add anything about proficiency, English proficiency. Okay. Um, so no, as Kili said, uh, generally uh, the minimum we ask is uh, IELTS six zero or equivalent, uh, and with the minimum of on um, each component five point five. But for some courses, as you can imagine, let's say if you're studying translation uh, or if that's master in uh, in medicine, you will need uh, a higher, a slightly higher level of English. So it could be six point five or seven zero, but these uh, requirements would be uh, would be listed on a page of the course you're applying to. So it's not very often you have higher um, higher requirement than six zero, but it it could happen. Also uh, about maths, so we do require uh, maths uh, equivalent of BCSEs, so uh, your level um, your level of maths. But if you didn't uh, do uh, maths, if you don't have a grade of that, don't worry about that because we have our again internal online test that you can do. It's for free, so the same as with our internal English test. Both of them are free. Admissions guide you on how to do that. So you just need to submit application first and then they they forward you uh, to the link where you can do the test. Uh, so it's not very uh, it's not very hard. There is uh, preparation online, so don't worry about that. Um, but yes, there, yeah, in the case of Essex, um, we wouldn't ask you to do any um, uh, extra tests or anything. We, we would just basically look at your maths, um, your maths from your bachillerato or your high school maths uh, that you would have done uh, for maths or finance related degrees. Um, but as uh, I can only reiterate, please check on a case by case. Uh, you know, every course is different. So just make sure that you're checking your requirements before you're uh, applying to, to anything. Um, Joanna, we have a question here. So the deadlines refer to their first IB year or the second IB year. You want to take that one? Uh, I'm not sure which deadline this question is about. Um, um, do you know? I don't know if they mean the for the application or... Maybe we can go back to that one. Maybe, maybe whoever sent that question maybe can clarify mm -hmm. and then we go back to it. Yeah. Yeah, could you just clarify for us which deadline you're asking exactly about because we are not sure how to answer that. Um, so the next question is, does health mean medicine? Not necessarily. So, <laughs> so um, I don't know, Joanna, if you have any health Ooh. courses, um, maybe you can add something later. But in, in the case of Essex, we have our Faculty of Health and, and Science. 
Um, but we don't offer medicine. So we offer um, health course, health related courses, but not necessarily medicine. So for example, we have nursing, we have physiotherapy, we have social work, occupational health. So these are all in the health sector. Um, but we don't offer medicine, unfortunately. We do have biomedical science, which can be a route to medicine. Um, so normally you could do a biomed biomedical degree and then afterwards you would do a postgrad um, in a med medical school. Um, but we don't offer medicine as a degree. Um, I don't know about you, Joanna, if you offer... Uh, it's, a, it's the same case. So we wouldn't offer courses uh, that qualify you to practice as a doctor, as a general practitioner. But we do have biosciences, we do have uh, mental health, which is also health. Uh, we do have sports related degrees. Uh, we do have counsel counseling uh, related degrees. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, so there is a, quite a range of courses related to health but not uh, not uh, doctor. Um, we have a question here, which is um, for both of us. So if we went to an American or British high school for one uh, for our entire high school, would we still need any English proficiency test? Um, and that would be yes, unfortunately. I know that must be quite frustrating for you guys, um, considering you, you probably speak better English than, than me and I'm native English. Um, but um, yeah, unfortunately, we, we still would need to see an English um, proficiency test. Um, however, for example, if you've done A-levels, GCSEs, uh, we, we can consider those. We can consider GCSE English. Um, and in the American system, there are some uh, qualifications, high school qualifications that we can consider as well, in place of having to do IELTS or uh, TOEFL or something again. So um, just uh, make sure you check regarding your uh, particular situation um, before paying for IELTS or TOEFL or something. So I don't know if you want to add something, Joanna? Uh, no, it's the same case. So if you did your A-levels uh, in English, then then uh, yes, you don't have to. Uh, if you if your A-levels were in English or if you did IB, uh, then you don't have to provide any additional um, English uh, certificate. Uh, in case you don't right now, uh, if you don't uh, have, if you can't do the IELTS. So if you don't have IELTS, if you don't have IB or A-levels. Then we, then we would offer you the English test just to help you with that. Uh, but I think that's it. In case we have anybody who requires a visa here, then just please mind that this could be a different case. Okay, because we don't, uh, we don't really, we can't change the regulations. So this will only depend on uh, immigration policies in place. But. I, I don't. I doubt we have anybody here uh, who requires a visa, but just in case we do, please bear, bear that in mind. Okay. Um, should I read the next question? Uh, so, I think that's we are coming back to the IB uh, the deadlines for refer to the first IB year on second one, and that's about application deadline. Um, yes, yeah, so I think if I understood well, so. Um... When you when you apply, um, so it would be for January two thousand and uh, sorry January um, fifteen, or normally the year that you're going to start university. So um, you would normally be uh, typically at the end of the IB one or beginning of IB two, and we would look at your predicted grades first. So we would we would ask from your um, we would ask you for your predicted grades given by your um, teachers, and we would look at that. Um, and then normally over the summer, uh, like in a couple of months now, then you would get your final IB grades. And then when we get the final IB grades, then we would be able to um, hopefully issue you a, a, a conditional, an unconditional offer if you've met all of those um, requirements. So when you initially apply, obviously you don't have your final grade. So we're just looking at your predicted one and then, and then we, you would finally send over your final grades later. Um, Joanna, I don't know if you want to add anything. No, I, th I think you said it, said it all. Um, so I think we can go forward to the next question. And the next question is, can you repeat when we should send the admission application? Uh, yeah, so um, the applications will open. They normally open. So if you're, if you're looking to come next year, the applications will open in September. And the deadline is the 15th of January the following year. 
But if you're looking to apply for Oxford, Cambridge, medicine or veterinary, you have to apply by October 15th, so it's much sooner um, than, than the over general, the general deadline. If you're looking to apply this year, um, the applications, I mean, some universities are still accepting applications, so you can still apply, but the UCAS deadline is the 15th of January. So UCAS sets a deadline, but some universities, they still have places available. So for example, now we're still accepting applications. So um, yeah, I don't know if, jo Joanna, if it's the same case for London Met. Yes, so uh, generally the same. So for all uh, all European undergraduate, uh, well, all European Union undergraduate applicants, you have to go through UCAS. Uh, if you're applying for a postgraduate degree, uh, because we have somebody here um, wishing to do the postgrad degree, you can apply directly through our website or also through UCAS, but then it's up to you. Um, but yes, as Kili said, so generally you should apply almost a year in advance, but some universities, and in, this includes us, we are still accepting applications for uh, September 2020 start. So you, you can still, you can still um, try and apply. There's also clearing in, in August. Uh, so that's when universities that still have a few places left, uh, they um, they inform students about that through UCAS, so you would still have to submit your application. And um, we have another question here, Joanna. So, um, how long does it typically take to hear back from admissions once you've applied? Uh, so, our admissions they normally take up to 10 working uh, days, so that's up to two weeks. Uh, if they are uh, not as busy, then obviously that would be faster. Sometimes when it's peak time, uh, this could take a little bit longer, but generally you should have an answer within two weeks, and then you get the offer we were talking about before. Okay, do you want Sorry, to I lost connection there for a second. Um, um, oh, no, no. So the so what, how yeah, long it's very is it similar. You, so about two admissions? weeks or ten working days. Um, obviously, around the January deadline, this would take a lot longer because normally everyone submits their application in January. So uh, yeah, around the beginning of the year, it can take a little bit longer to hear back from us. But yeah, generally it's the same. Perfect. Uh, thank you. And I think the next question is. Uh, is there any scholarship for your um, Yeah, we do have some scholarships. Um, depending on where you're from, uh, um, you, you have to sort of check on our website. We have a scholarship finder and you have to, you have to type in your, where you're from and the course you're applying to, and then you'll be able to see the scholarships that you're eligible for. Uh, if you're doing the IB, we have an IB scholarship, uh, which is if you have 34 points in the IB, we give you £2,000 scholarship. Um, but yeah, you, for the other ones, you have to check on the case by case um, basis. I don't know if you want to add anything, Joanna. Um, well, we do have a school, the academic excellence scholarship right now. Uh, that's so that's up to uh, three thousand pounds, and that's based on academic excellence. But uh, I'm sorry, the deadline was first of May. So this, if you were wanted to start in September 2020, you wouldn't be able to apply for this anymore. But if you're uh, applying next year, uh, to start next year, then you're welcome to apply. Uh, and right now, you can still apply for student finance, uh, for the student loan in the UK, and uh, EU students should still be uh, able to get it without uh, any issues. We will see what will happen next year regarding we have another one here. Do you think, offer full scholarships? Is. Unfortunately, in the case, we, we don't offer full scholarships. Uh, I don't know about you, Joanna. Uh, no, we wouldn't offer full scholarships because you can get a student loan. So all European students can get a student loan uh, for tuition. Uh, so there's no need for full scholarship at the moment. Um, we do have some full scholarships for non-EU students, and um, and uh, we also have some for some postgraduate students. Uh, there are, for instance, uh, the International Student House 
uh, offers uh, accommodation, full accommodation for a year uh, of your master's degree. So that's an external body and we just work with them, uh, but you're welcome to apply for that too. Um, so there's there one there from question? Monique. Do um, you have a better chance of receiving so an offer if you apply early? And what is your acceptance rate? Uh, okay, so uh, I would say yes, there is a better chance of receiving an offer uh, if you apply early. Uh, the ex acceptance, it's because with some courses, there are plenty of courses, but some, some, for some other courses, there is a limited, a strictly limited number of places. Uh, so, uh, so it's best to apply soon. Uh, and the acceptance rate, well, it really varies. Um, I think um i think for this year for london met it's 89 percent right now um, um I yeah know no, it's, it's the same think. for us so it, it depends on the the acceptance rate and on the course and and um definitely i i would say when you apply the sooner the sooner the better because um as Joanna mentioned some courses they only have a certain number of places so for physiotherapy for example we only have 30 places and they are they are filled, you know, within a, a couple of months. So it's best to apply uh, as soon as possible if you can. Yeah, yeah. We have, for for example, uh, I think music technology and production. There's only one class, and that's up to thirty places. And once that's uh, filled in, that's it. So uh, with, with some courses, you you have to be quick. Uh, but you can check that with us. If you're worried you, there might be no places left, just email us and we will check it for you. Uh, the next question we have here is, what is the campus this is culture a good question. like? <laughs> um, so in the case of Essex, um, it's a very nice environment to be in. Um, I think the nice thing is, as I mentioned, it's, it's very international. So for example, every Thursday we have like a, a, an international market. So um, it's a food market and you have, you know, the Norwegian bakers, you have also a Caribbean one, a Bolivian, um, you have, yeah, stalls from all over the world, which is really nice. Um, there's always something happening in the square. So it might be some live music, it might be um, some sort of uh, demonstration or uh, presentation. So I think the environment is, is really nice, especially in the summer as well. Um, and I think one thing which is really nice as well is that the, the academics, they, they know their students, they, they greet them in the street and, and in the squares and stuff. So I think that's something which is, is quite nice and quite personal um, to, to Essex. So yeah, I don't know if you want to add something about your uh, London Met as well. Um, so we, I, there, there are so many things that really, it's, sometimes it's hard to uh, be on top of what's currently happening on campus. Uh, I remember one day, uh, one day I came to work and uh, in front of the campus I could see a crowd of people cosplaying and uh, I play the Witcher so I could recognize the guy cosplaying Witcher but the other guys I, I couldn't really tell what they are doing. It turned out there was like a mini anime convention on campus so there is something happening all the time and uh, and I'm sure you, you won't be bored. Uh, we have um, the canteens we have, they do uh, sometimes uh, uh, themed uh, food. So one of the canteens uh, is, uh, I, I think it's Caribbean themed. Uh, the other is more English-like, but they also do uh, various days. And, uh, and there are a few different um, societies. So really, whatever you would like to do, if there isn't a society for that, you can just open a new society. So uh, you could you could do anything. We have you another want question to. here. Um, where can you do a year abroad, and do you have a student-led newspaper or radio station? Uh, okay. So yes, we do have a year abroad. You normally have to uh, apply for that in advance. So. When you, if you start uh, in September and you want to go somewhere in sem September next year, that's when uh, that's when you should start thinking about it and making um, 
to the scene if you if you are if your course is suitable for that we have a whole team dealing with that so they will be able to advise you and help you with all the arrangements and uh, yes we do uh, well maybe not a newspaper but we have a newsletter uh, so but everything is is uh, really digital right now there's no need for paper waste so you would get a student newsletter uh, every I think it's every week uh, and I'm not sure about the radio though there might be some and um, we sure. have another question here so do you have on-campus housing and do most students live on campus or do they seek off-campus housing? Um, Joanna, do you want to take that and then I'll follow up? Sure. So uh, we don't have on-campus housing, but we have uh, different uh, different locations that we recommend. They are open our international brochure. So depending on the budget you have, you can choose uh, between a few different uh, locations and they are it's up to you where you want to live it's up to you what you, what you want to choose and uh, and uh, it also depends of course on your budget so you could live just across the street uh, so like two minutes walk from the campus you could live somewhere uh, a bit further and what we see uh, is a tendency in, among our undergrads uh so bachelor students who come in uh to the country and at first they live in these accommodations that are uh, recommended by us but then they make friends and for year two and three they decide to rent out a house with uh with their uh, fellow fellow students with their best friends yeah yeah it's the same same with essex so yeah. normally the first year you would live on the campus and then the second and third year you live off campus um, I would add as well, if you're under 18, you have to live on the campus. So if you're a minor when you arrive, um, you, we have a responsibility, so you have to stay on the campus. Um, and, you know, there's there's different accommodations for lots of different budgets. So if you're looking for a more budget accommodation, um, you, you can find that if you want something a little bit more luxury with an ensuite and more space, um, there is that as well. So. Uh, lots of different options and all of, if you live on campus as well you have a free gym membership included so um, I think one thing to consider as well when you're applying for accommodation if you're looking off campus make sure you're considering the bills because if you live on campus normally the bills are included and if you live off campus um, you need to make sure that you're factoring that in because sometimes it seems a cheaper option and then when you realize all the bills are included sometimes it works out more expensive so when you're doing that research just make sure that you're checking um, and also check with the universities if they have some sort of internal agency that can help you find off-campus off accommodation, um, which in the case of Essex, we do, we can help you find something because obviously you're coming from far away, you don't know the area, you need some support sometimes. So make sure you're making the most of, of that. Yeah, I think that's very good advice that you should always uh, calculate your bills into whatever you would be spending and especially in your year one you want to make sure you're safe so uh, if you can live very close to the campus or on campus that's definitely, definitely. Uh, the best option so i think that was the last question so i think we're going to wrap it up now i think um should we turn off our mics you know a really specific and uh, we will get back to you to each single one of you over email um so that we can slowly wrap up and uh, you can go back to your classes or to your other daily activities um thank you so much joanna and Kili, for this very interesting presentation thank you for answering all these questions and uh, i believe it was very useful and interesting um, we will send the recording of this webinar to everyone who attended in case you want to go back to some of the questions or see some of the videos. So uh, this is goodbye from us for today. Uh, we will be informing you on our next webinars on different countries and uh, topics. So once again, thank you so much. Stay safe. Um, follow your dreams and uh, hopefully we see you all on campus or on the road uh, very soon. Uh, thank you so much and uh, enjoy your day, everyone.